You are now listening to episode 29 of the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. In this episode, Dr. Taylor covers omegas. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. Welcome to the Real Health Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, and I'm really excited to be talking to you this week because we're talking about a really, really interesting topic um, that's a, you know of personal interest to me, and that's your omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acid ratios. Okay, and this is kind of a, a really a next level nutrition topic. So that's why I'm really excited to get into the details because as soon as you're starting to look at your omega-6 to omega-3 ratios, you're really starting to take seriously and look closely at the root causes of inflammation and disease. Okay, so if you're joining us for the first time, like I said, my name is Dr. Taylor Crick. This is the Real Health Podcast. You can find us online at www.realhealthwithdrtaylor.com. You might you might be listening to it there now. You can find us on iTunes. Okay, so you can download this podcast. I would appreciate it if you gave it, if you subscribe and give it a review and a rating. Uh, that's awesome. We really appreciate that. We get a lot of great reviews, so we love hearing that from our listeners. You can also find my clinic online. It's Align Utah. It's www.wealignutah. Dot com. You could sign up for our newsletter, for our blog, uh, check out past articles, things like that. Uh, but what we preach and what we practice in our office is you know, functional corrective chiropractic care, functional nutrition, functional medicine, lab testing when necessary, and detoxification, true cellular detoxification. And so these are looking for the root causes of of disease. And we can't talk about the root causes of disease without talking about the big I word, inflammation. So tonight we are going to talk about inflammation and how omega-6s and omega-3 ratios really play in to inflammation. So what is inflammation? Well, inflammation is an immune response, okay? And so when your immune system responds, to an invader or, you know, to, to something that it's attacking or even, you know, say you get a scratch on your skin, the first thing that attacks, the first responders are what's called the innate immune system. If you go back and you listen to past episodes, listen to our Build a Bulletproof Immune System workshop, we talk a little bit about the difference between the innate immune system and the complement immune system. The innate immune system and the first responders, and that is your inflammatory cytokines. That's inflammation. That's, you know, you scratch your arm on a rusty nail and right away, it's the first thing you're going to see if it doesn't bleed is it's going to get puffy and it's going to get red. And that's inflammation and it's there for protection and it's a good thing. Now you sprain your ankle, going to get inflamed. You fall and you, you know, bump your arm, it's going to get inflamed. We all know these. We've all seen examples of inflammation. And that is a good thing. That is a smart thing. Remember, your body is always doing the right thing at the right time for the right reason. Sometimes it just leads to bad effects, and we need to find out why. But it's not the body's fault. The body's doing the right thing. And so inflammation is a great, great healing process. Now, what happens It was bad is when inflammation becomes chronic. Okay, so if you've listened to the past episode, the last episode we talked about heart disease and the basis of heart disease, and we went into a little bit about inflammation, and in particular, inflammation in the arteries. Okay, that is the the biggest thing when you talk about inflammation is inflammation in the arteries as the number one causative factor for heart disease, our number one killer. Now, you can also have cellular inflammation. You can have nervous system inflammation. You can have inflammation in lots of different places, and it is bad, absolutely. And, and so what we're talking about today is really all inflammation, but we're still following along with last week and talking about heart disease and, and looking at how we can decrease inflammation, in particular with cardiac events and cardiovascular health. 
So with that being said, that's inflammation, and that is what we're talking about. Now, what we're talking about with relation to it are your omega-6 and omega-3 fats. Okay, so the, out of the two of those, you know, if we stopped 100 people on the street and we asked them which one they'd heard of, uh, it, you know, 99 people are going to say omega-3s or 100. They're all going to say omega-3s. We've heard so much more about omega-3s. You do a quick, you know, Google search on what supplements to take and fish oil is going to pop up and your omega-3s. You know, you got omega-3 now. Uh, like I heard somebody talking about recently, your omega-3 Oreos, right? So they've like sprinkled some flaxseed in Oreos and they're, you know, encouraging you to say that Oreos are now anti-inflammatory. But that, that couldn't be further from the truth because of all the sugar and the toxins and the chemicals and things that are going to cause cellular inflammation and, and all the bad stuff that's in there. So don't be fooled by that. But, you know, you get your omega-3 eggs. You find omega-3 breads. You'll find, you know, it's now a marketing ploy, your omega-3s. Well, omega-3s and omega-6s are both equally as important. And most people do not know this. That's why I'm really excited to bring you this information today. So first off, what are omega-3s and omega-6s? And omega-9s too, for that matter. They're your polyunsaturated fats. Okay, so we have saturated and we have unsaturated fats. Right, Our saturated fats come from our animal products, come from our coconut products. They're very, very healthy, even though they've gotten a bad rap. You can check our articles on saturated fats, things like that. They have gotten a bad rap, but they're cardioprotective. Uh, every single function in your body requires saturated fats, the same way that every single function requires cholesterol. You know, these things that have gotten these bad wraps that are actually really, really good for you, but there's saturated fats. There's monounsaturated fats, which might be something like olive oil. There's polyunsaturated fats, which are your omega-3s and your omega-6s. Now, the reason that you hear so much about omega-3s in our society is because there's a ratio between the two, okay? So what we're going to talk about, and also with those fats, you know, that's a very, very brief introduction. Go back into our episode called Fats and Fats 2.0. Fats 2.0 is particularly uh, good. You know, fats is a basic overview of the concept of, you know, not being scared of fat, eating good fat, and, and becoming a fat burner. But fats 2.0 really gets into the details of what's a polyunsaturated, what's a monounsaturated, what's a saturated, what's a trans fat, you know, it goes into detail. So your omega 3s are things like you have three of them. One's called ALA. That's your plant-based, okay? That's flaxseed, that's walnuts, that's your plant-based omega-3s, ALA. Then the next two are EPA and DHA, okay? So those are omega-3s. You hear a lot about those, especially EPA and DHA. Now, I want to talk about those just really quickly is, you know, the, the plant-based is, is ALA, and they're all good, but when you get them into your body, ALA, your body actually has to convert it into EPA and DHA. They're a little bit longer chain. ALA is an 18 chain uh, molecule, fatty acid, lipid. EPA is 20 and DHA is 22. So your body has to convert those. And the older that you get, the harder it is to convert. You start running out of the enzyme that does the conversion, and that's just a little bit harder. So for vegans, for vegetarians, it's harder to have your omega-3s high where they need to be. So just a little side note with the three differences there, ALA, EPA, and DHA. Your omega-6s are LA, that's linoleic acid, GLA, gamma-linoleic, DGLA, which is dihomogamma-linoleic, and arachidonic acid. The ones that you're going to hear the most about are LA and AA. Okay, those are really high in your vegetable and seed oils, which is what we're going to spend the majority of today talking about. So you got three omega-3s, you got four omega-6s. Now between the two of those, there's an ideal ratio. And the data actually suggests that we evolved our genetic, we're genetically designed for a ratio of as close to possible as one to one. Okay, one omega-6 to one omega-3. The highest number that I've ever seen as acceptable is four to one. Four omega-6s 
to one omega-3. So your sixes are almost always going to be higher than your threes. Well, what's happened in past years, you know, since about 1980, when fat really became the enemy, our dietary intake of good, healthy omega-3s coming from things like high-fat dairy, coming from things like red meat, coming from things like uh, our seafood, our fish, those things have decreased. All of our good fats have decreased, and our consumption of vegetable and seed oils has massively, massively decreased increased. Okay, so when you're talking about the root of the problem, that is the root of the problem. So now what they've found is when they measure our lab values, our blood values, Americans average about 20 to 1, 16 to 18 to 20 to 1. And you know, I'll tell you, we measure these in our office. So the other day I was doing some research for this and I just grabbed 12 random lab tests and just averaged their number. And we did average 20 to 1 as an office, okay? And I will tell you, I'll be honest, this was two years ago that I took mine. I'm going to retest this month. But two years ago, I was at 30 to 1, okay? And so that was shocking to me, and that should be shocking to you too because I was eating a pretty healthy diet. It's not like I was driving through McDonald's and and eating a bunch of crap. I was eating what most people would consider an impeccable diet, a toxin-free diet, a plant-based, a whole food diet. But I was eating a lot of things that we're going to talk about in a little bit that are omega-6 dominant, even though they're health foods. So I want to read you this quote here. This is what the current literature suggests about uh, the ratios here. So it says, several sources of information suggest that human beings evolved on a diet with a ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 essential fatty acids of approximately 1% whereas in Western diets, the ratio is 15 to 1 to 17 to 1. Western diets are deficient in omega-3 fatty acids and have excessive amounts of omega-6 fatty acids compared with the diet on which human beings evolved and their genetic patterns were established. Excessive amounts of omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids in a very high omega-6 to omega-3 ratio as is found in today's Western diets, promote the pathogenesis of many diseases, including cardiovascular disease, cancer, and inflammatory and autoimmune diseases, whereas increased levels of omega-3 PUFAs, a low omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, exert suppressive effects. In the secondary prevention of cardiovascular disease, a ratio of 4 to 1 was associated with a 70% decrease in total mortality. A ratio of 2.5 to 1 reduced rectal cell proliferation in patients with colorectal cancer, whereas a ratio of 4 to 1 with the same amount of omega-3 PUFAs had no effect. The lower the omega-6 to 3 ratio in women with breast cancer was associated with a decreased risk. A ratio of 2 to 3 to 1 suppressed inflammation in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, and a ratio of 5 to 1 had a beneficial effect on patients with asthma, whereas a ratio of 10 to 1 had adverse consequences. A lower ratio of omega-6 to 3 fatty acids is more desirable in reducing the risk of many of the chronic diseases of high prevalence in Western societies, as well as in the developing countries that are being exported to the rest of the world. Okay, so that comes with the journal Biomedical Pharmac- Pharmacotherapy, uh, and so that's, that's been around for a while that that ratio is really, really important. That last sentence is the most important. It says a lower ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids is more desirable in reducing the risk of many of the chronic diseases. Okay, so that is what we're looking for is a low ratio. Now, what that's typically measured as is AA, arachidonic acid, to EPA. And so I want to talk, before we go into some of these foods, I want to talk about how does that ratio get so skewed? How can it get so skewed in our diets as compared to other countries and what happens? So one thing is the massive, massive increase in vegetable and seed oil consumption. You know, many cultures, and before the Industrial Revolution, we had virtually no intake of these seed oils and these vegetable oils, which, you know, 
it, regardless of the fact they're they're GMO, a lot of them, canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil, oil. They're massively, massively altered and genetically modified. So it's the the vegetable oil in- industry, and then it's the other thing is the increased use of cereal, cereal grains as feed for our livestock. Okay, so that's why it is so important to go grass fed with your animal products. They're still omega six dominant, but the difference when they've measured them is kind of like it is in in humans. The good healthy cows are about two to three to one. The grass fed, pasture raised, two to three to one is their ratio. Whereas the grain fed cows are massively, massively high, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 20 and above. I've heard as high as 40 to 50 to 1, but I haven't been able to find those statistics. So what happens? You know, how does that happen? Well, just like what happens to a human. You know, you feed it a lot of grains, you feed it a lot of sugar, and you increase inflammation. Now, arachidonic acid, AA, when we're looking at the ratio, the AA to EPA ratio, arachidonic acid is a downstream product of grain metabolism. So you eat a diet that's very high in grains, your omega-6 levels are going to be high. And that goes for a human as well as a cow. So the cow ratios are massively, massively high. Now what happens to the cow is they get fatter quicker, which is great for a farmer, right? Because then they're going to make more money. But just like a human, they get sicker quicker. They need antibiotics. They need hormones. They need things to keep them alive so they can make it to slaughter time. And then in in turn, we're getting that, right? So you have to switch your animal products before you switch anything else. You have to go organic and you have to go grass fed because you're getting all these upstream products from you know all, all just all the stuff that they're putting into the food supply when you're not going organic or when they're being fed grains. But so the biggest thing though, the biggest one more so than the the cattle, are these vegetable oils. In fact, this is really shocking. This is coming from the USDA. This is in 2014. Americans now get almost 20 percent of their calories from a single food source soybean oil. Okay, and that breaks my heart. <laughs> soybean, you know, it's 90% genetically modified. It's a massively, massively high ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s, and that's where we get 20% of our calories. So that's why, you know, the, the ratios are so thrown off. 20% of our calories, almost 10% of all calories from the omega-6 fat linoleic acid alone. Okay, and that's from a that's from the USDA, their statistics on our food supply, 10% almost 9% of calories from linoleic acid and 20% of calories just from soybean oil. That's how these numbers get so skewed. So what are some of these numbers? What are some of these healthy foods? What are some of these, you know, foods that could throw you off? Because, you know, I mentioned earlier that my ratios were at 30 to 1. Okay, 30 to 1. So how, you know, And I wasn't eating vegetable oil. You know, I wasn't even touching it. I didn't eat any boxed, any processed, any packaged foods for, you know, years before I did the testing. And, yeah, I mean, just a, a pretty, pretty stinking good diet. Okay. Really, really clean diet. So what can throw it off? So, okay. So first off with these oils, look at the ratios in some of these oils. So you're looking at something like uh, grape seed oil, 696 to one, cotton seed oil, 258 to one. Some of these oils are massively, massively, massively skewed. Okay, and so you can see how you're getting a massive increase in omega 6s just from these oils. Some of them have no omega 3s at all. Corn oil, 46 to 1. Palm oil, 45 to 1. So you got to avoid all those oils, all those vegetable oils. That's no doubt. But here's some of the health foods. Okay, so say you're already avoiding those oils. What are some of the health foods that might surprise you? Well, almonds. Almonds is a big one, they only have omega 6s. They don't have omega threes. Now you hear and you've heard me say in the past, you got to increase your good fats. You got to increase your good fats. What are the good fats? There are things like avocados, or things like olives, or things like 
nuts and, and seeds, right? And But those things that I just named are all very high in omega-6s. So almonds, cashews, 48 to 1 ratio. Avocado, a lot of people, you know, they're increasing their good fat, so they're increasing their avocados, 15 to 1. Pistachios, 55 to 1. Pumpkin seeds, 108 to 1. Sesame seeds, 138 to 1. Olive oil, 11 to 1, just in the 6 to 3 ratios. So those are some of the health foods. Those are the surprising ones that I compiled and looked at because that's what I was doing. You know, I wasn't eating enough salmon in my diet. And I also, you know, I'd cut back on on red meat, you know, just thinking, and not for any particular reason is going vegetarian or anything, but I just prefer chicken. And I think that chicken's a lot easier to get clean and it's cheaper and things like that. So I ate a lot of chicken. I don't eat pork, uh, but I was eating a lot of chicken and just not enough red meat, not enough. I don't eat dairy. So at the time I was not, I I didn't have very many omega-3 sources. So some of the good sources of omega-3s, you know, are your things like fish. Okay. So, I mean, that's a huge one. So caviar, for example, you know, I don't exactly eat caviar, but the ratio there is 1 to 84. So 84 on the good side, 1 on the bad side. Salmon, you know, that's the most commonly talked about. You know, that's 1 to 15, really high in omega-3s. Mackerel, 1 to 12. Sardines is another good source, really, really high in your omega-3s. Some of your plant sources, you know, your chia seeds are, are 1 to 3. Your flax seeds are 1 to 4. Walnuts are high in omega-3s. So there are plant-based sources, but remember, your body has to convert those. So your best choices are your cold water fish, your salmon, your mackerel, your sardines, your caviar. Your high in omega-3 cold water fish. Now, here's the next question that we get is, you know, so should I take an omega-3? Well, the, the answer to that is, is, is probably yes, um, if you live in America. You know, we actually have a lot of international listeners. And what they've shown when they look at other countries, your omega-3s and omega-6s are directly competitive. So the answer to the question, how much omega-3 should I take, is only dependent on your omega-6s. Okay, so there's no magic answer of you should take 1,000 milligrams a day, or you should take 2,400 milligrams a day, or you should take 500 milligrams a day. In fact, when they've looked at America versus other countries, they've found that the other countries that like don't intake these vegetable and seed oils, that don't have a very high diet of omega-6s, they have a very, very low need for anti-inflammatory omega-3s. So the answer for you, how much omega-3s do you need, largely depends on your omega-6s. Okay, so an example of that in another country is in the Philippines, omega-6 intake is less than 1% of the total calories. So remember I just said that, you know, it's just linoleic acid alone is 9% of our calories. So their total omega-6 intake is less than 1% of their total calories. And what they need for EPA and DHA is a 278 milligrams a day needed to achieve a 60% tis- tissue concentration. So that's one thing to look at is your tissue concentration of omega-3s. They only need 278 milligrams. Okay, so that might mean nothing to you if you don't know what the typical dosages are in milligrams. But so 278 milligrams, that's what you need to remember that the Philippines needs to be where they need to be with omega-3s. Now in the U.S., where the omega-6 intake is 9% of the calories, you need a whopping 3.67 grams per day of EPA and DHA. That's to achieve 60% tissue concentration. So that is massively, massively, over 100 times higher than what they need in the Philippines. So the gist of that is to say that you don't know how much omega-3 you need until you know how much you have and how much omega-6 you have. You can look at it in your diet. You can balance your diet to know, you know where you're eating. 
you know, 200 grams of chicken and a half an avocado and a handful of walnuts a day and no nut and seed oil. And you can, you can measure this and you can see where you are in ratios measurement-wise with your diet, but where are you at in your body? And the only way to know is to get tested. So we do the testing in the office, so I'm going to go through some of my levels and some of my values and what we've seen here. And you know, honestly, I, I'm not going to lie, this is kind of embarrassing because mine are really bad. You know, I was not impressed. I was pretty bummed when I got these lab tests. But the nice thing about lab testing is that it gives you a baseline. You know, I picture so many people that are out there that are just like I was, eating a really, really, you know, health-conscious and healthy diet. You know, somebody that's eating an avocado a day, and they're snacking on almonds, and they're snacking on cashews, and they're avoiding red meat because they're, you know, they, they read that somewhere. And they're, you know, they're exercising, and they're avoiding processed foods, and they're, you know, they're, they're watching their toxins, and they're making their own soaps and shampoo. And you know, you know what I mean? The, you know the person that I mean. They're doing everything they think or that they know to be healthy, but at the same time, there's something underlying. And a lot of times, the only way to know that is by testing. So with my labs, what I found with my labs, with my ALA, okay, so remember that's plant-based omega-3s, really, really high. Okay, really, really good towards the upper end of the range there. My EPA and DHA, kind of in the middle of the range, but, but kind of towards the bottom, really. You know, I just wasn't eating a lot of fish, wasn't eating a lot of seafood, and, you know, it's, it's toxic. You know, I don't, I, seafood's my favorite food on the planet, but aside from salmon anymore, I, I don't really eat it because it's really toxic. It's got high toxic burden loads, shellfish, things like that. But salmon, you know, I've started up in my in intake of wild-caught salmon. But anyway, those were kind of on the lower end, but within, within normal. And all these, all these levels were within normal, I'll tell you, too. So there, none of them are outside of normal until you get to that ratio. Uh, the next one, linoleic acid. So, you know, we just talked about that is the 9% the, the of people's cal caloric intake. Mine was really, really low, almost into the too low range, almost off the scale of, of the good zone. Uh, GLA was a little bit high. DGLA was kind of in the middle. Some of those are anti-inflammatory. You get it from borage oil, primrose oil. Those are not your inflammatory. Six is as much as LA and AA are. And then AA, the arachidonic acid, that's the one that's a downstream byproduct of grain metabolism. I was, I was at the upper end of normal. But if, if you look at my chart, all the, the levels are right within the green area. You know, there's a red to the left and there's a red to the right. And I'm within the green. Then the next one down is my trans fats. My trans fats are fine. They're right in the middle of the green. They're, you know, they could be lower, I'm sure, but they're right in the middle of the green. But then you go down to my ratios. So the first ratio is LA to GLA. That's a desaturation efficiency. I was normal on that. But the next one, the next one is the one that jumped off the page to me. The next one is my AA to EPA, and I was high. I was 30. Uh, and, and that broke my heart. You know, that's a high, high number. It's honestly, it's one of the highest that I've seen in all my patients. Um, it's just off the charts. And so the next one is an EPA to DGLA. That's an eicosanoid series. Um, you know, it's normal on that one. And, and it's just another thing to look at. But the main one is that uh, it's called metric number 10. It's AA to EPA eicosanoid series. 30, 30 to 1 was my ratio. And then the last thing, the last measurement that this gives you is actually an index of your omega-3 fats. So like I said, I was, I was normal at the top on ALA, EPA, and DHA, within all the normal range for each of them. But the index is all of them combined, and I was low on my index of omega-3s. So I knew right then and there, it wasn't necessarily a matter of me cutting out omega-6s, even though that was important, you know, because I was high on AA and just needed to stop eating. Like, you can still eat avocados. They have omega-3s. But I really needed to increase my EPA and my DHA. Okay, so I've done that with over the course of, of a long time through increasing my salmon, getting my salmon intake back up, and supplementing taking a supplement, taking a fish oil, taking a high-quality one. Now, in our office right now, we're carrying orthomolecular labs. They're uh, 
ortho omega is a really really good one i'm really happy with it they've got a they're famous for their processing plant it's right in the bay where they catch the fish where the fish come in and so they, there's a really short catch to process time they take it right into the factory and they they process and the way that they process it too you know sometimes fish can, can have a high level of mercury or have a high level of toxins but the processing for most of these fish oils is clean and it wipes out a lot of the mercury and when they do you know lab testing on the supplement itself they usually don't have a high level of mercury but that's my labs what we've seen when we've tested patients you know first of all we've never seen anybody in the normal range we've seen people close seen definitely people in the single digits you know plenty um, but it, it, the, for most everybody they're elevated. And I'm sure nobody would predict where, where they were. We've even seen some people that, you know, taking too much borage oil or primrose oil or something that, you know, most people have never even heard of, uh, but that's throwing off their ratios. So the only way to know is to get this measured. You can contact your physician, say you're not in Utah, you're not in Salt Lake, or you can reach out to us and you can ask us about this test. It's a really easy test. We can send you the kit Okay, the kit is you do it in your own home. You take a blood, a blood, a finger prick. You get a drop of blood, and you put it on a card. You'd have to do it four or six times, but you get a few drops of blood. You put it on this card. It's really easy. You let it sit for 24 hours and air dry, and then you send it in. The results get sent back to us. You don't need to do any blood draws. You don't need to have any needles. Uh, the finger prick is nice and easy. And yeah, like I said, we can send you the kit. Call us. You can ask about pricing. We are running a special on it through February for Heart Health Month that is 25% off. So if you're listening to this podcast right when it's released in real time, February of 2016, call the office or send us an email and take advantage of that special pricing. But otherwise, it's still pretty affordable considering that if you listen to the last episode, the cost of coronary artery disease uh, from the American Heart Association is between the mid 800,000s and $1.1 million, <laughs> right? So a $200, $250, $150, $350, any of those lab test costs are nothing. This is a $200 lab cost. We're running it for $150 for February. But, you know, some of our other tests, $350 for adrenal stress profile, things like that. That is a drop in the bucket compared to what you're going to pay for the adverse effects from having bad adrenals, from having bad inflammatory markers, from having heart disease, things like that. So you got to know what can be measured can be improved. So give our office a call. Also check back, you know, look back into our archives, look back into our uh, articles. You know, I wrote an article to go along with this uh, it, this episode. So it has the charts, some of the charts and some graphs and things that you can look at, some visuals and know where your omega-6 is are coming from and make sure that you're consciously aware of those omega-3s, eating a lot of the wild-caught salmon, taking a supplement of fish oil, but really knowing how much you need. So once again, this is the Real Health Podcast. Make sure that you follow us on Facebook. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. Make sure that you give us a rating and a review on iTunes. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram. And these are all just ways that you can stay involved with the Real Health Podcast and keep moving in the right direction. Keep building the strongest and healthiest version of you. And remember, this year, 2016, is all about transformation not just information. So as always, I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, and I will talk to you guys next week. Thank you for listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything, health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.